Hey folks, welcome back to 3Z. Bobo here. So I completed PIT in uh, May 1975, and by mid-June I was settling in as a 38 IP advance. Uh, very comfortable with it, and just enjoyed the hell out of it. It was so much fun working with those young people. Uh, one of the things that I first noticed at Vance is we had a cadre of um, senior captains. I mean uh, captains with uh, eight, nine, ten years experience. And these guys were just all great guys. Uh, a lot of them were um, Vietnam uh, returnees, and they had seen it all. At any rate, uh, they were always willing to sit down and answer questions and talk to you about student training. And I just, I sucked up everything they had to offer. One of the guys that I really admired and enjoyed uh, talking to was a fellow named Hal Roberts. Now, at the time, Hal was the uh, in-flight commander, commander of November flight. And uh, so this one day, I'm walking down the hall and uh, happened to peek in. I saw Hal sitting in there and I said, hey, I said, would you happen to have some time? We could chat about a couple of things. He said, sure, come on in sit down. What's on your mind? And I don't know what the issue was, but it had to do with student training. And so we sat there and started talking about philosophy and so forth. And just as the conversation was, was we were getting into it, this uh, IP stuck his head in, in the door. Now, I did not know this guy, um, but he carried his demeanor as a, uh, he came across very timid, if you will. So, okay, fine. And uh, Hal looked over at him and he said, uh, hey, what's up? And this kid said, uh, sir, he says, uh, would you mind, would you have some time, sir, if um, you might be able to talk to me, sir, about uh, career advancement, sir? And so I got up, starting to leave, and Hal said, hey, Bob, keep your seat. He says, this isn't going to take long at all. Okay, so I sat back down. And Hal looked at him and said, what's up? He said, well, sir, he says, I'm coming up for an assignment here pretty soon, and I was just wondering what you thought I ought to put in for. So Hal was a smoker, and he used to smoke uh, with um, all these cigarette holders. So he lit a cigarette, and he took his cigarette holder, put it up, and took a real long draw on it, just a long, leisurely draw. Well, I'm sitting there watching... Hal, and then I'm looking over at this guy standing in the doorway, and Hal, and he took a long drag, and then let it out slowly, and he looks over at this guy, and he says, well, so-and-so, he says, uh, thinking about it for a minute, he says, I think you ought to get out of the freaking Air Force. And I whoa, whoa, now I wish I'd gotten up and went on my way, but anyway, and kid looked a little surprised, and Hal says, Why, what are you looking surprised for? He says, the um, students are scared shitless to fly with you, and half the time you're sick, we can't use you. He says, uh, to that end, the students took it upon themselves to create a little plaque for you that said DNF on one side and not DNF on the other, and they mounted it on the wall with a hinge in it so that you could raise it up and hook it to the DNF side and then not DNF. He says that would help the scheduler ascertain whether you were good to go for flying or not. He said, and then when you take check rides, he said, um, every time you take a check ride, you blow it so bad, it takes me two or three more rides to get you back up to speed to where you can go out and scare a student. So he says, I think, uh, I think probably come as far as you can go here, and I think you just ought to pack it in. Well, this kid... I, I can't tell you how I would react if my boss had told me that. But this kid says, well, sir, he says, thank you for your time, and I really appreciate it. And he went to render a salute, and I swear, if it hadn't been for gravity, his hand would still be up there today. At any rate, he wanders off, and Hal and I pick up the conversation, and I'm thinking in my mind, okay, we'll file that one away. I imagine I will have use of it somewhere down the line. And for the better my, part of my career from then on, I just was laying in wait for the opportunity. And by golly, did I get it. Coming around 1987, maybe, I had a guy in my squadron. 
I had the academic squadron, and as such, I had 38 guys, and I had T-37 guys. I had this T-37 guy that was like a seagull. We used to have to throw rocks at him to get him to fly. Now, we were required 15 sorties um, a, a quarter. It's not too terribly a lot. Just to give you a sense of perspective, I usually had 15 sorties within the first week and a half of the, uh, of the quarter. Of course, I was a time log. But anyway, this guy, Jesse, he was a seagull. And uh, it got to be annoying. Uh, at the end of every quarter, having um, flight records call down and say, you know, Captain Schmuckenfuss there has yet to, he's needing six or seven sorties. <clears throat> so we'd have to generate a cross country just for some other guy to go out and fly around with this guy for him to get his sorties under his belt. So he comes in the office one day when I'm sitting there, and he says, uh, Colonel Holliker, would you have a moment? And I said, absolutely. Come on in. Have a seat. What's on your mind? He said, well, sir, he says, I'm coming up for assignment. Okay, now I'm getting clarity. And he says, I'm just kind of wondering what your thoughts are. He said, you know, I'll, be, I'll have the opportunity to seven-day opt. When we got an assignment, we were given seven days to either accept it or to uh, turn it down and get out of the Air Force. So he says that to me, and I went, yeah. I looked over, and I said, well, Captain Schmuckenfuss, I said, I think you ought to get out of the frickin' Air Force. And I went, God love you, Hal. And <laughs> I said, look, I said, all you do is sit back there in the, um, in the uh, IP room. I said, you're, you're not a bad platform in instructor, but I said, you can't fly worth crap. And I said, you take a look at the um, gate when you drive on base, it says Air Force. And I said, I don't have the confidence if we were flying into combat, you'd stick with me through a mission. So I said, I know the airline's higher, and I think that's just right up your alley. Well, sir, I appreciate it, but thank you very much. So he leaves. A couple days later, I'm at home, and my wife came up to me, and she said, um, Captain Schmuckenfuss's wife came up to me uh, yesterday. Now, at the time, my wife worked at the same school she did. And... Uh, my wife says, well, I said, well, what would she have to say? She, she said, well, he, she really appreciated the support you gave for her husband for his career choice. And I looked at my wife and I says, Sue, I told him to get out of the freaking Air Force. <laughs> she just looked at me and turned around and walked off. But uh, sometimes in a career field or when you're the boss, you just got to tell the young people how the cow eats the cabbage. And uh, I don't know if I needed to be as blunt with it, but I did and still feel pretty good about it. So with that in mind, Bobo, base gear stop. Have a good one.